I am the daughter of a TikTok family channel. I found something disturbing in our basement. It started with my bruises disappearing. I became the proud owner of a black eye during cheer practice. One of our flyers, Brittany Carlisle, punched me in the face during our outro, and it took some serious self-control not to start screaming like a baby. Brittany may have looked like she couldn't hurt a fly, but she had a mean right hook, even if it was an accidental flailing of her arms when she had been caught in the music and the heat of the moment. I knew my face was fucked from the look on Coach's face when she handed me frozen peas wrapped in a towel and tried to smile but her supposed smile kept widening into a grimace. It was bad. This sucked because according to my mother, I was not allowed to get a bruise, especially on my face. Robbie, my best friend on the sidelines, made it very clear that the bruise was bad. When I'd grabbed a makeup mirror and risked a glance at myself, he was right. It was bad. This thing was worse than eye bags. In the changing rooms after practice, I remember trying to smile through the pain in my face which was slowly spreading to my eye and the back of my head. I tried to hide it with makeup, but it somehow looked worse. So, I gave up. I didn't think about the bruise until I was walking back from school a little later. The pain was gone, and it didn't really hit me until I was video chatting with Robbie, and his expression crumpled, inclining his head like a confused puppy. Holy shit, how did you fix your face? I paused, my gaze flicking to my reflection in the camera. I wasn't a fan of looking at myself. When I video chat, I minimize the screen and scroll through Instagram, or search for a YouTube video to watch on mute while Robbie talks about moon landing conspiracies. I didn't mean to look at myself. I had trained my eyes not to look too hard through a camera because all of my flaws were present and mom always had something to say if I did not look perfect. I have a makeup routine, as well as two skincare rituals before I go to bed and wake up. But it's not enough. I don't look as cute as I did as a little kid. I'm a lot rounder in the face, and apparently, I've been putting on weight in my cheeks. Mom has been using filters on my face since I was a little kid, and now I can't take my real reflection seriously. What? I frowned at my pale face and slightly half-lidded eyes from a sleepless night. In the camera, I looked the same as I always did light brown hair pulled into a ponytail and minimal makeup. I winced at the state of my hair. I forgot to brush it after practice, so it was a mess in my face. Mom usually filmed my siblings and I coming home from school and made it clear we couldn't look a mess. We had to look picture perfect for the camera. I made a mental note to fix myself up. I didn't understand what Robbie was talking about until I found myself gingerly prodding under my right eye before the thought slammed into me. Something ice cold crept its way down my spine. I had a bruise, I thought dizzily. Coming to an abrupt stop on the sidewalk, the sound of traffic flying by collapsed into a buzzing white noise in my head. So, where was it? Dude, what happened to your battle scar? Robbie's voice joined an endless buzzing blur of nothing inside my skull. I remember feeling foggy headed, his words not quite registering. What bruise? Was on my lips only for me to remind myself that Brittany Carlisle had punched me in the face not even two hours earlier. I had sat in the nurse's office with a bag of peas pressed to my face, downing Tylenol with a can of coke, and complaining of a striking pain that was not going away. So, how did I forget? How did I forget the pain that was very much real? Several things had happened between the hit and walking home presently. I went to grab my things from the changing rooms and ended up talking to a girl about a concert she was planning to go to. I definitely had the bruise then, because she commented on it, making a joke that I wouldn't be the face of the squad for a few days. Then I started my trek home. Nothing had changed, and yet it felt like something had. I remembered changing out of my cheer uniform and pulling on my sweater, but looking down at myself, my head in a daze, I was still wearing it. Robbie was still expecting an answer, his laugh pulling me from reverie. Hey, are you good? He peered at me through the screen, and I could glimpse his mother in the background pottering around. I noticed she kept twisting around to look at the camera, and I had no doubt she was discreetly listening in on our conversation. I told him yes and played it off like I was hiding it with makeup so I didn't confuse him even more, but when I delicately grazed my fingertips under my right eye which I was sure had been a bulging yellow bump, courtesy of turning my coach's face a whole new shade of pale, my skin looked normal. I searched for any hint that I had been hit, pressing my fingers over my eye and waiting for that pain I knew had been real. I knew it was real because the bag of frozen, now melting, peas was still in my backpack and I had been relieved of my captain duties until my face was better. It wasn't my choice to become captain.
Mom has a lot of influence with both her job and her TikTok account. So most of my life since I started middle school has been documented on her channel. Currently, she's private, so her channel is not visible. Maybe that's a good thing though. Robbie didn't look convinced, though he nodded and smiled. Hey, I gotta go, alright? He gestured to his mom standing behind him with a disapproving scowl. I've got homework. His eyes said something different, however, and I nodded and promised to call him back later. We had a code of sorts. If Robbie pulled a face and wrinkled his nose, his mother wanted him to get off his phone. Robbie's mom wasn't a fan of me, and I guess I could see why. She called me a superficial doll behind my back when she thought I wasn't listening. It should have stung. I mean, it did sting. But part of me understood her. I had to look perfect on camera, and if a strand of my hair was out of place, my mother would drag me out of the room and tell her followers that I was having a bad day, or that I was sick. The worst part is having to wake up wearing makeup. It's a 6 a.m. start every morning, with mom pulling the three of us out of bed and then making breakfast for her, what I eat in a day, TikToks. Initially, I thought they were fun. That was until mom started insisting on me having a single banana for breakfast, instead of my usual Nutella on toast. When I commented on it, she explained it was because I was getting puffy cheeks. I looked for people on her TikToks commenting on my lack of breakfast, but most of her followers were people in our town, who only gushed about our so-called good looks, and that we were a very attractive family. These people didn't see the protein shakes my brother is forced to drink every morning to stay healthy, they look and smell like barf, and the three of us being weighed every Friday night. Luckily at school, I could eat what I wanted. I made sure to pile my plate with as much junk as possible and then threw it all back up straight after. It's not bulimia, I am fine with my eating. I just don't want mom to see that I've eaten too much. I was still prodding my non-existent bruise when my phone vibrated, and a text popped up from coach. Can you bring in your pom-poms tomorrow? I know you're on the sidelines, but Mickey needs them. I had no idea how I was going to explain the sudden disappearance of my bruise. I supposed I could tell her I was using a new brand of concealer. Mom gets makeup sent to her from brands, so it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that I'd used it on my eye. When I rounded the corner of our cul-de-sac, I pushed my phone back into my pocket and dumped my backpack on the ground, unzipping it, and pulling out my brush and makeup bag. I could see my brother ahead of me, already rehearsing his entrance through our front door. I could see from the way he was practically dragging himself up our driveway, that mom had already made him do it multiple times. Mom especially liked it when I wore my hair loose, so I spent five minutes brushing and styling it, touched up my makeup, and strode toward our house. My brother had already walked in, so it was my turn. I pasted my usual smile on my face, and walked straight into mom's iPhone, already filming every inch of me at every angle. Here's Zoe. Mom was using her fake voice again. I hated her fake voice. So, as you guys know, or if you're watching this for the first time, this is my 17-year-old daughter, Zoe. She followed me into the kitchen, where my brother was lounging on the counter, and my sister sitting at the table, her head in a book. These were the personalities we were urged to use in videos since they get more views. Ben is seen as the lazy child because he made it his goal not to be in front of her camera, while Ali had read a book once, and now she was known as the smart one in the comments, so every time the camera was on her she had to be holding a book. Off camera, it's the opposite. Ali secretly vapes and has a boyfriend she hasn't told mom about, while Ben prefers to bury himself in literary classics while cementing himself as the joker of the three of us. I dropped my backpack on the ground while mom buzzed around me, asking me how school was. I told her my usual answer. It was pretty fun, because I wasn't allowed to say anything else. I caught my brother's panicked look in the corner of my eye. He shifted on the counter to angle himself so he could get a proper look at me. Allie peeked behind her book. I had a bad day a few months back and made the mistake of saying, it fucking sucked. So, mom abruptly stopped filming, before pulling me upstairs to my room and lecturing me on camera etiquette and good manners for almost four hours, before dragging my siblings into it. Neither of them had forgiven me for that slip up. I had a great time, I decided to play up for the camera. I got an A in social studies, and cheer practice was so fun. I raised my arms, like she had taught me, mimicking my routine. I could feel my brother and sister silently judging me, their gazes burning right through my skull. I was lying, of course. I got a C-, and I got hit in the face at practice. I gingerly prodded my right eye, 
feeling for the bruise that was no longer there. But mom didn't care. It was declared on camera, so it was real. Thankfully, mom wrapped up filming quickly, abandoning the three of us. I could already tell she was itching to edit and post the footage. Life returned to my siblings' faces once she was gone. Allie threw her book on the table with a scoff, and Ben slid off of the counter on his usual hunt for snacks, standing on his tiptoes to get to the candy in the top cupboard. I jumped up to grab myself a snack, and remembering mom's rules about my eating, I grabbed a banana from the countertop, peeling it a little too violently. My phone vibrated. It was Coach, once again telling me to bring in my pom poms. I lost my current ones at an event out of town, but my middle school ones were hanging around. Where did mom put my old cheer uniform? I asked my brother through a mouthful of banana, leaning against the counter. My brother turned to me, already with a sly smile. What was that? I already knew he was talking about my cringe worthy dancing. The commenters like it. He pulled a face. Do they enjoy barfing too? I settled him with a glare. My cheer things, I said, again, where are they? Ben shrugged, throwing me a Snickers bar. Basement, I think. He spoke through chewed up chocolate, giving me an unflattering grin. I let the candy bar bounce off of the wall, reaching for another banana. I could tell my brother knew I was hungry. He'd caught me purging one time, and I had insisted it was the stomach flu. I knew he didn't believe me. In the viewer's eyes, Ben was this lazy ball of bedhead, offering minimal conversation and snoozing in the background. The real Ben, however, was your average disgusting teenage brother with no pride. Mom didn't like that side of him, however, urging him to keep to his camera personality when she was filming. 